Hey guys, it's Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at some stabilizer jacks that we have available. Now these are going to be jacks that can be used in a lot of different applications, whether it's going to be your camping situation, maybe you've got a new utility trailer, or like we're using it today in an enclosed trailer. Basically this is going to provide a really good connection point between our trailer down to the ground. If you've ever loaded a utility trailer or walked around in a camper that didn't have stabilizers, there can be a lot of movement and a lot of shifting. Now if you're trying to get some rest and somebody's moving around in the camper, it can be pretty annoying. If you're trying to load something heavy up into a trailer and the trailer's kind of moving around on you, it can make it a little dangerous. I even see these used on the back of utility trailers when guys want to load and unload their four wheelers or their side-by-sides to just prevent the back of that trailer from being pushed down. We're going to show you that here in a little while. Let's go over a few of the specifics so you know if this is going to work in your application. Then we'll go outside and take a look. Now for our mounting surface, we're going to be looking at a four inch long by inch and seven eighths wide bracket. And we've got two mounting holes here and then one on the inside. Those are going to be separated by three inches on center. The drop leg comes down six and a half inches for a total of 18. We start with 11 and a half inches, so with this fully retracted from our mounting surface to the foot pad, it's going to be 11 and a half. Fully extended, it's going to be 18. The foot plate is going to be three and a half inches wide by four inches long. It's going to help to spread that energy out over a greater area and help to prevent this from sinking down and in the ground. And like most stabilizer jacks, they're going to have a nice heavy duty steel construction. This one has the black powder coat finish on it, so it should help to resist corrosion for an extremely long time. Now, as far as a static load, these can support up to 1,000 pounds. So once they're deployed, they can give us 1,000 pounds per stabilizer of, of stabilizing capacity. When you initially set them up, you do slightly lift your trailer, ever so slightly. And in that capacity, it's 650 pounds. Now, when it comes time to store your jack, you want to use your foot and release it. It's going to take any of the pressure off, then it's just a matter of pushing down on our tab, lifting it up, rotate it down, and back up into the stored position. At that point, you're ready to head back down the road. Now, regardless of your situation, this is going to give us a real good idea of the stability that we can expect out of our stabilizers. So I'm going to back up on here first, and you'll see the back of the trailer wants to drop down, wants to lift the back of our truck up as well. So after we get those deployed, we'll see it's going to make a world of difference. It's going to be a lot steadier. We're not going to have all that bounce in our trailer. Now the first step in installing them are going to be picking your location. Once you've decided that, see so we've just got that flat bracket there with the two holes. I'm going to be using number 14 self-tapping screws. I think these are about 7 16 of an inch, so 3 8 inch hardware will fit through there really well if you want to go that route. Once I do, I'm just going to bring it up to the frame of my trailer. I'm going to make sure it's square. And then I'm going to mark my inside hole location here. I'm going to get that hole started with my self-tapper. Alright, now we'll bring our jack back in. I'm going to use it to hold it in place while we mark our other hole. With our hole mark, we're going to pull this back down. And get that one going. Now definitely one thing to keep in mind, we want these to swing in and under our trailer. So the notch tab here, you can see it right there, that should be facing inboard. Now we'll start with our inside one here again. We're going to get this loosely installed, line up our other hole, and get it installed. Now you can see it's, we're kind of blocked out here. So if you had 
kind of like a swivel end. You can probably get in here and do it. But I think it's just as easy just to run it up here with hand using the quarter inch ratchet. Every application is going to be different. You might have nuts and bolts that you're using, but it's pretty easy to get in here with a ratchet to get it tightened down or a wrench for that matter. All right, so we get that one snug down. We also snug down the one in here. We can go to our other one and get it done. Now to store your J, you just pull down, rotate it up and in. Now you notice since we did run this in line with our frame, our tab right here is making contact and it won't quite allow that to store up and in properly. You can see it just won't quite go in there. What a lot of customers decide to do are just put washers up here on top between the stabilizer and the frame. That'll buy you a little bit of space and still give you good stabilization. Or you can rotate this and pivot it just slightly by moving one of your bolt locations either a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left and allow for this, it's basically this tab here that's sticking up is what's interfering. So either way you want to get around that, you can. I think we'll just add a nice fender washer kind of right here on this side. That should take care of it for us. You can see, clipped in, just adding that little bit of a gap there. Everything looks really well. Now that we got this one installed and working properly, all we gotta do is head over to the other side and we'll repeat the process there. Now to deploy it, of course, we're just gonna pull out and down. You'll rotate it until that springs back up into its connection point there. Then we can just bring down our foot pad here until it makes contact. That's where your rod's gonna come in handy. And this is available separately if you don't already have one. It will come with your jacks, but if you have jacks that you need them for. But that's gonna go right through one of the holes here. And then it also goes through a hole in the back side. You can see how it'll actually pass all the way through there. And once we have it in that back side hole, just gonna apply a little bit of pressure there. As you can see now, nice and sturdy. You need a little bit more pressure, get a hold, Let's push it down. When we do the same thing on the other side, we'll be in good shape. So as you can see, a set of stabilizers like this, whatever your situation is, can make a big deal. A lot of the customer reviews say the same thing. They really like how much more stable their trailer or their camper is. And if I had the situation, whether I was going to be loading and unloading my UTV like this, or if I had a smaller pop-up or a, kind of like a high-low camp or something like that, I would definitely want these on there. I've been on some camping trips to where without proper stabilization, as soon as somebody moves, everybody can feel it. All in all, I think it'd be a worthwhile investment and increase either your safety when loading and unloading or your enjoyment while camping.